Hello everyone, I am your host Dr. N. Tom, and today I will talk about insect anatomy. I will split up my anatomy video into three videos, each covering a different part of the insect anatomy. The first video, Introduction to Insects, General Info 4, Anatomy Part 1, Head and Accessories, will go into detail about the head of an insect. The second video, Introduction to Insects, General Info 4, Anatomy Part 2, Thorax and Accessories, will include all the details about the thoracic region. And the last video, Introduction to Insects, General Info 4, Anatomy Part 3, Abdomen and Accessories and other details, will include the abdomen, inside and out, and some other details. Before we head to the head, let's begin with some background information. Insects are members of the phylum Arthropoda, which literally translated means joint foot. Arthropods appeared in the fossil record over 520 million years ago and can be found in both marine and terrestrial habitats. An arthropod has three key features. One, they have a segmented body organized into prominent regions called tagmata. Two, have an exoskeleton made primarily of polysaccharide chitin, or the stuff found in cell walls of fungi and algae, and the exoskeletons of insects and crustaceans. And three, have jointed appendages that enable the rigid bodies to move. Arthropods include organisms like millipedes, centipedes, insects, shrimp, lobsters, crabs, barnacles, isopods, copepods, sea spiders, horseshoe crabs, daddy long legs, mites, ticks, scorpions, and even spiders. Insects have three tagmata, the head, thorax, and the abdomen. I will focus specifically on the head in this video. The head of an insect is composed of numerous plates, or scree lights. The scree lights are fused together to form a solid capsule that can hold one to three simple eyes, two compound eyes, one pair of antennae, and mouth parts. Simple eyes, like the eyes that humans and cephalopods have, simply contain only one lens, hence the name simple eyes. For insects, the simple eyes are called ocelli. The ocelli are unable to see actual images, only different degrees of light intensity. The other eyes of insects, called compound eyes, are made up of a few to several thousand individual units called amatidia, or facets. Underneath each amatidium is a second conical lens that works together with the amatidia to focus light down onto the rhabdom, or a light-sensitive structure which is connected to the optic nerve connected to the brain. Insects, as a result of having so many amatidia, see the world through hundreds of TVs at once. Kind of makes my head hurt just thinking about it. The head of an insect also contains the brain and a simple bunch of nerves from which the nerve cord extends and runs the length of the body along its ventral surface. Insects also have their antennae and mouth parts on their heads. The antennae, the feathery component that all insects have, allow the insects to smell, communicate, find food, water, and mates, and also have a variety of other uses. Insects have one of three mouth parts. The mouth parts, chewing, sucking, and sponging, are one of the ways that insects are identified. An insect's diet, as a result of having different mouth parts, depends on the type of mouth part it has. So, Let's focus on each type of mouth parts individually. Chewing mouth parts are the mouth parts for insects that chew their food, and common insects include dragonflies, damselflies, grasshoppers, crickets, katydids, and beetles. Chewing mouth parts contain the labrum, mandibles, a pair of maxillae, and the labium. The labrum is similar to the upper lip. The mandibles are the jaw-like structures that are adapted for cutting, crushing, and grinding food. The maxillae are usually below the mandibles and are used to grasp food. Each maxilla is equipped with maxillary palps, or antennae-like appendages that help touch or taste respective food. Below the maxillae is a labium, or the lower lip, and each labium is followed by labial palps that help guide food into the mouth cavity. On top of the labium is a tongue-like part called the hypopharynx and insects with chewing mouth parts can eat other animals, like dragonflies and damselflies do, 
can eat plant-like matter like grasshoppers or consume both plants and other animals like some crickets. Insects with sucking mouth parts will not chew their food, but rather have a diet of liquid food as opposed to solid food. There are three types of sucking mouth parts, piercing sucking, lacerating sucking, and siphoning mouth parts. Sucking mouth parts have been modified into a proboscis or a beak. For piercing sucking mouth parts, common of insects like true bugs, leaf hoppers, tree hoppers, fleas, sucking lice, and some species of fly, the proboscis is made up of an elongated tube like labium with sheathed stylets, slender sword like mandibles, and mixellae that cover the food and salivary channels. The stylets do the actual piercing which then allows the proboscis to suck up whatever juices come from the cut. Lacerating sucking mouth parts are nearly identical to the piercing sucking mouth parts, except that the stylets are modified to merely cut the skin minutely, allowing them to suck up blood from the wound. Siphoning mouth parts found on butterflies and moths do not pierce or suck. Instead, the proboscis is merely coiled up like a spring when not in use, and only uncoils to its full length when it is being used. The last type of mouth parts are the sponging mouth parts. Most flies have this type of mouth part, and they use a fleshy labium on the proboscis that acts like a sponge, which then sucks up the liquid and food particles that these insects eat. For insects with sponging mouth parts, if they come in contact with liquid food, they can just slurp it up. But if they come across solid food, the insect will regurgitate a salivary secretion that liquefies the food. This done, the insect can then slurp up the food and be fed. Some insects, when they turn into adults, like luna moths, mayflies, and stonoflies, these insects do not have any functional mouth part at all. When they turn into an adult, they cannot eat. They just live long enough to mate and lay eggs. Makes me hungry just thinking about it. This concludes the video of insect heads. Next time, we'll talk about the thorax and related anatomy. My name is Dr. Entom, and I hope you enjoy this video.